Hey folks, welcome to this episode on empirical formulas and dealing with these decimal ratios. Now, in a previous example, what we did is we found our, uh, our mass of our sample and we assumed 100 grams. And then we found the mass of each of our elements. We converted those into moles by using their molar masses. We found the smallest mole ratio, our smallest mole value, and divided all those values to get our mole ratio. And those mole ratios became our subscripts for our empirical formula. Now, we got something like, for example, 2.01 as our final ratio after we divided the, the smallest mole value um, and divided all those values by that value. We would get something like 2.01, which we rounded to 2. And we said, okay, well, this is going to be the subscript for carbon, so it's C2. There are going to be instances where you don't get something that you can round. So a fraction between 0 0.1 and 0 0.9 cannot be rounded. So if it cannot be rounded, what do we do? What we're going to do is we're going to multiply by some factor, and we're going to multiply all of the elements by that same factor to get that decimal into a whole number. So some situations that you might uh, fall into are things like you would get 0. Uh, no, I won't use 0. Let's use something like 3.249, right? This looks very similar to 3.25. Now, what would you do to get that to a solid number or a whole number? You'd multiply this by four and then you would get your full number, okay? So this is what we are going to do in order to get rid of these decimals. We are going to multiply them by some factor and what we do to one, we do to all of them. So if you are stuck with something like 0.25 or 0.75, we are gonna multiply by four. If you are stuck with something like 0.5, we'll multiply by 2. And if you get stuck with something like 0.33 or uh, x.667, we're going to multiply by 3. And these will allow us to get full numbers for our ratios. Let's take a look at how this works. So here we have a question that's telling us aspirin. Now, this question is a little bit... A little bit um, it's holding back. It's holding back a little bit because we know the, the name of this compound already. We could easily use this to help us determine the molecular formula. But we'll cross that bridge in another video. Let's just focus on our empirical formula for now. And let's see how we can use these decimals to help us get that empirical formula. So first things first, whenever we're trying to get an empirical formula, we have to convert these percentages into uh, grams. And so the first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to assume 100 grams. So that 60% carbon is going to turn into 60 grams of that carbon. So I'm going to split up my elements C, H, and O. Now, if you're not familiar with what's happening, please watch the other two videos on empirical formulas, the one, the introduction, as well as the regular uh, empirical formulas. This one is a little bit more advanced with these decimals. The same ideas apply, but if you need a little bit more practice, definitely watch those previous videos. So this one is going to turn into 60.0 grams. 4.5 grams of hydrogen, and 35.5 grams of oxygen. Next thing that we want to do is we want to convert this into moles. So I'm going to put my grams on the bottom, moles on the top. The only unit that we know that has both grams and moles is going to be our molar mass. And so the molar mass of carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. So that number belongs with the grams, and that means that I'm going to put my 12.01 at the bottom, which means I'm dividing. I'm going to do the same thing for the hydrogen, 1.01 grams per mole, and then 16.00 grams per mole. Now remember, hydrogen and oxygen both can be diatomic if they are found by themselves. We are only using the mass of a single atom. All right, so we're going to use these molar masses to convert our grams into moles. And by doing that, our grams will cancel out and we'll be left with the unit of moles. And so what we're going to find here is we're going to have 4.9958 mole. Here we will get 4.4554 mole of hydrogen. And here we'll get 2.2187 mole of oxygen. Of these, the value for oxygen is the smallest. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this value and divide everything by that value of 2.2187 mole. 
instead of writing out the number every single time, I'm just going to use these quotation marks and uh, save me a little bit of time. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to cancel out our mole values and be left with a unitless number. And what we get here is we get 2.251698. Over here, we will get 2.00811. And here, we just get 1. Alrighty. Now, let's look at the hydrogen first. Let's work our way back up. This right here can be rounded down. It's very close to 2, so we are going to round this to 2. However, this one up here is not within that you know, 2.00 to 2.1 range, and so we can't round down. It's also not in between the 2.9 and essentially 2.99 range where we can round up. So what do we do here? Well, what, we, what it looks like is that I see from all this, this number right here. 2.25. That's our ratio decimal. Now, what we can do with this is that we can't round it, but what we can do is multiply by some factor to get this into a whole number. And if you remember from this screen before, this is a quarter, and if we multiply by a factor of 4, we will be able to get this into a whole number. That's going to equal 9. Now, what we do to 1, remember that if we factor a number out, we got to bring it, uh, we, when we factor it out, we factor it out of all the elements. And so if we are now multiplying by a factor, we must multiply that factor to all the elements. So I'm going to multiply this by 4, and I'm going to multiply this by 4. And so here I'll have 8, and here I will have 4. So congratulations, we just found our empirical formula where we have C9H8O4. Now as you move along, we're going to be using this empirical formula to find our molecular formula. Uh, so again, we already know the, the, the name of this compound. So there's only a couple more steps to take this into a molecular formula. So if you're interested in how that happens, please watch my other video on molecular formula. But before that happens, let's do an example. So pause this video and try this example by yourself. We'll return in a little while and we will take this up together. Alrighty, welcome back. So first thing that we need to do is that we need to assume 100 grams. So we assume 100 grams. That's going to convert all of these percentages into grams. C, H, O. This will be 71.98 grams of carbon. This will be 6.71 grams of hydrogen and 21.31 grams of oxygen. We are going to find the molar masses from our periodic table, 12.01 grams per mole. Again, here we're going to have 1.01 grams per mole. And here we'll have 16.00 grams per mole. This will allow us to cancel our grams out and be left with mole. And what we will get here is 5.99333 mole of carbon. Here we will have 6.64356 mole of hydrogen. And here we will have 1.33187 mole of oxygen. That last one is our smallest value, so we're going to divide all of these by that 1.33 number. All right, and this will allow us to cancel out our moles. I'm going to do the same thing for all of them, and so I'm just going to put our quotation marks. This will allow us to cancel out our mole values, and we will get the following values. Here we will get 4.4999. Here we would get 4.9881, and here is going to be 1. So again, working our way back up, I can see that this lands within that range of 4.9 to 4.99, where I can round that to 5. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to round this to 5. The next one, however, I can't round to 5. It's almost in the middle of the number. But it does look like 4.50. And that's what I'm going to round it as. Now, we can't keep this as a decimal. We have to find a factor to multiply all these numbers by. And that's going to be 2. And what we do to 1, we have to do to the others. And so we will get 9, 10, and 2. And so these will now form our subscripts. So carbon has a subscript of 9, hydrogen has a subscript of 10, and then oxygen has a subscript of 2. So our empirical formula will be C9H10O2. 
This right here is ethyl benzenoate, and it's used as a uh, artificial uh, artificial fruit flavor in some foods. I hope that helps. Uh, please watch the other videos if you are still um, emerging with this concept. Uh, if you are looking to uh, determine how to create the molecular formula, please watch my other video. I hope this helped. Thanks, and see you again.